A recent USA Today article states that many challenge books focus on communities of color. One in three books restricted by school districts in the past year featured LGBTQ themes or characters. My first guest, George M. Johnson, is an award-winning non-binary writer, actor, and activist. Their first book, All Boys Aren't Blue, a young adult memoir about their life growing up black and queer in New Jersey and Virginia, became a New York Times bestseller and was one of Amazon's best books of the year 2020. I spoke to George back in season two about the highly anticipated release of their memoir, and this is what was said in our conversation. I was writing the book that the 10-year-old me needed, oh. that the 15-year-old me needed, that the 21-year-old me needed. Uh, going in the process of writing the book, it was really cathartic. Uh, there were a lot of wounds that I thought I had healed that I hadn't healed yet. And in telling my story, I got to see how so many people in the world were also going through the same things and hadn't yet been healed from those very same wounds. Well, nine... <laughs> So, Tam fam, nine months after that interview, George had their memoir removed from school libraries in eight states. A year later, it grew to 14. Today, All Boys Aren't Blue is number three on the American Library Association. <laughs> wait, wait. No, no, no. Before you applaud, it's number three on the list of most challenged books of 2021, meaning they want it removed. As honorary chair of the 2022 Band Books Week, now through September 24, George says they are fighting back and fighting for the truth that has always existed but rarely gets told. Please welcome New York Times bestselling author George M. Johnson to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I, I love our audience because when I said number three all time, they were like, yes, because that's what we expected, the yeah. celebration of this book that was so bold and unapologetic. After that interview, I started to see your name trending on social media and the word banned next to it. You went from being celebrated to reading some of the most violent and vitriolic language that I'd seen. Yeah. How were you processing it? It's, it's bittersweet. Um, and I have to say it's bittersweet because on one hand, I get to watch how the book has healed so many people how it's changed the lives of so many teen readers, uh, but also how it's changed the lives of so many uh, elderly readers. As uh, I actually did a book club one time with people over the age of 60, 33 people over the age of 60, wow. who had read the book. Uh, but then you're watching the other violent side of it where they're removing the book and in essence telling those very same teens that not, not only does your story not need to exist, but you don't need to exist. Right, and that's the thing with this, it's a memoir, it's your story. So yes. by trying to ban your story, you're trying to ban you. It's your story. Yes, yes. Were you prepared? I mean, I knew, I, of course, when you write a story like this from different, you know you're gonna get some heat. Yeah. But like being on the top list of banned books in the country. Yeah. Were you prepared? Did anyone say, get ready? Yes, I was prepared. Uh, I was prepared Why? by. I was prepared because uh, I was raised by a woman, uh, my grandmother, Louise Kennedy Evans Elder, who you know, like old folks always say, uh, you ain't got to get ready if you stay ready. And so I, I was ready. Like I knew this book was going to be banned. I've lived in this country long enough to know that these type. There's a reason that my story is doing what it's doing now. There's a reason that those queer writers in the Harlem Renaissance were silenced. There's a reason that we had to have a stone wall. There's a reason why all of these things have happened to get me to this point. But I knew going into this that the book would be banned, so I was always ready for it. Um, at being at the intersection of blackness and queerness, you oftentimes have to be ready for a violent response. You almost live in a state of where your mind is always thinking, this thing could happen to me. This thing could happen to me. So it's best that I be prepared for it. Um, I don't like to be reactive. I like to be proactive, so. Yeah. And so proactively, you embrace the ban. Yes. So one of the things that you did on social media was basically like, like look, y'all, I was banned here. Yes. Now come and see me here. Yes. So you didn't <laughs> run from it. No, um, you know, Toni Morrison didn't run from it, and Baldwin didn't run from it. And so, you know, when, <laughs> when you come from, when you come from that type of stock of, of authors and you have your ancestors on your side, and I always believe that our ancestors are with us, um, we, we can't cower in the face of cowardice, you know? And so I, I had to be ready for it. 